This is Kevin Benedict, Senior Analyst for Digital Transformation with Cognizant, reporting live this week from beautiful, smoky, fire-surrounded location here in San Diego. <laughs> and I have as uh, with me as guests Steve Drake from Feed Henry. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks, Kevin. So there's smoke outside. <laughs> there's fire surrounding our hotel here. <laughs> and you're laughing. Yes, well, we don't see this stuff uh, out east. It's usually raining or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, beautiful, hot, but yeah, the, the smoke's a little scary. Uh, <laughs> too funny. <laughs> hey, so you guys, Feed Henry, a company with a very interesting name, <clears throat> are now making a big splash. Talk to us in, in like a 30 seconds, what's Feed Henry about and why should we care? Right, so at Feed Henry, we provide a enterprise grade mobile application platform. And really it's about leveraging open technologies. Um, on the front end, we provide development environments that leverages all the latest technologies. And it's a cloud-based platform. So uh, we're able to put our uh, platform and deliver it through any cloud infrastructure. So we work with all the major cloud infrastructure folks. And at the end of the day, it's about a real uh, modern, um, agile platform that allows for you to uh, really accelerate that development uh, deployment of those applications for companies really moving to that idea of you know, moving a company's mobile strategy along. Got it. So Steve, you were with IDC forever. Yep. You were kind of the, the originator or the starter of the whole enterprise mobility practice. Why did you choose Feed Henry when you decided to jump out in the vendor world? Right, great question. So uh, I've been looking at a lot. I've been looking at these companies for a long time, uh, you know, pre two thousand when they were still meet platforms and such that were out there. And um, there are really three things that actually attracted me: uh, our, our leadership, our, our, our CEO, who's uh, uh, been very strong in the mobile space, has understood this market, has, has done uh, startups before, um, as well as the people. There's been a lot of. Uh, 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 returning folks, uh, if you will, that have come back to work for him, which I think speaks a lot to that leadership quotient. So, um, repeat offenders, maybe, is what you call them, but uh, definitely that was a very good sign. And then the technology, very, very strong technology. And what I've learned since we've left is that it's, it's even stronger. We have a fantastic development team uh, based in Ireland that uh, really understands cloud, really understands mobility. And, you know, one of the things I've noticed since we've been here is we, we really haven't lost deals based on our technology. Got it. So, Steve, I'm going to have you put your analyst hat back on. All right. Meeps have struggled, the mo and the mobile application development platforms have seem to have struggled. Do you agree with that? Yes, I think so. I think Why? So. I think they've struggled because a lot of the legacy guys have failed to uh, sort of pivot fast enough, right? So, I think the market today is about open technologies in the development environment, making sure you're making it easy for your customer to be able to build applications, um, and also thinking about cloud-based technologies in the background, right? So making sure you can have a cloud-based platform that uh, is very quickly and easy to deploy. Uh, the days of, of building an app and taking 10 months to build that app are, are gone, right? Um, the ability to build a, an app quickly, to have a pricing model that works and allows you to start start a project and and be able to be future proof but yet you know grow and scale as well becomes very important and I think uh, the largest companies that have been in that space have failed to kind of pivot and start to think about those technologies they're starting to do it now um, but there's a difference between sort of you know hey we're cloud-based versus um, you know really being uh, uh, you know, well understood and, and, and really recognizing the technologies and being able to provide those solutions that are uh, really valuable to that customer. So I think that's a big, big challenge is how quickly they were able to pivot. And I think it's showing now that that, that didn't happen. So where's the future leading? What, what does enterprise mobility look like going forward? Right, so I think you know a lot of companies are still, you know, even at this show, you still hear a lot about MDM and hey, we're, we're managing devices. And, and let me just interrupt, we're here at the M6 Mobility Exchange. Very good. Um, and so I think companies, first of all, are making, beginning to make that move and in earnest recognize that there needs to be that move towards enterprise app enablement, right? I think everybody recognizes that. Um, but how do you get there, right? And I think once you start um, bringing companies on that recognize this is where we need to move, 
the market is starting to open up and recognize, hey, this is where we, we, we want to go in terms of building apps. And so we believe we're in the right position at the right time. Like I said, it's about being agile, uh, being able to address applications quickly, um, leveraging the latest in open technologies, and thinking about uh, leveraging the cloud in order to build those apps. So being able to be easy to use uh, at, at a reasonable price point, um, and one that's uh, uh, certainly able to be flexible as well. So this, these are the kinds of technologies we think are, are, are available to companies now that look to build uh, mobile apps. So let me ask you another set of questions. It used to be the belief among folks involved in mobile platforms that there was a, um, a strategic value in having one end-to-end -end platform where you develop your tools, you develop your apps, using tools and graphical interface development tools and drag and drop, all that, putting them on a standard, maybe even proprietary platform because there's speed and the total cost of ownership of managing applications on one platform mm -hmm. would be so much simpler and easier to manage over time. You train them on one set of tools, you train the help desk on how to do it on the platform, you put all your analytics on one platform. However, Today, it seems like that market has exploded into a dozen different pieces. There's, you know, there's the mobile security guys, there's mobile data guys, there's network connections, there's, there's, um, you have all the Java guys and you have all the different development environments out there that people prefer. Right. They'd rather build their apps in anything they want. Mm -hmm. And now, how is it really easier to use 12 different pieces than one platform? Right. Well, I think you hit it on the nail in terms of, uh, or hit the nail on the head, if you will, uh, in terms of what's happening out there. Is that you've um, you've really got lots of different technologies that people are using, and we've sort of embraced the idea of BYOT, where the T stands for toolkit. So the right tool uh, for the right project at the right time, right? So the idea that um, you know you are going to have multiple types of projects going on at once. So uh, we always use the example. You know, you may have a marketing guy that wants to build a beautiful B2C yeah. customer-facing app, leverages a you know native iOS build, right, and builds this for uh, uh, an iOS app. Um, on, at the same time, you've got sort of this internal uh, deployment that you'd like to have, a field service worker, perhaps, that needs to use a hybrid JavaScript type deployment uh, and be able to deploy to multiple types. What we're saying is, let's allow those different types within an organization to build. Let's not disrupt that innovation. But when it comes to bringing those uh, projects to the back end, give that power back to the CIO to allow them to manage and secure on the standards, the policies, and making sure that that's getting integrated properly to the back end. So the reality is that this is happening. So you can demand and say, hey, we need you to write in this development environment. But when you offer up that opportunity to build in any environment and still be able to provide uh, the sort of decoupled project orientation, we think that that's really the, the, the strongest model. And you're, when, when you start dictating to your end users and your developers and your, your business units, uh, it becomes very difficult to get that buy-in on the, on the end user side. Yeah, so I don't think it was done by choice. I think the users just weren't being herded the right direction. And so they all went a bunch of different directions. So the market responds now. Right. If we can't corral you guys, then we have to give you access to everything. That's right. Is That's that right. how you see it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just that, you know, if you think about what developers are learning today in, in college and, and coming out of school, you know, JavaScript is sort of the de facto today, right? So um, why do you need to force them into an older, maybe proprietary environment when that's not what they want to do? We always hear, well, oh, the new kids coming into the job market don't want to do you know, what you want them to do. Right. But the reality is, from a technology perspective, we're seeing more and more of the, the new open technologies be the, be the technologies that companies want to start building on. Got it. So here's the important question. Do you play games on your mobile devices? <laughs> Sure. Uh, my kids play probably more than me, but absolutely, sure. That's a safe answer. <laughs> Does your wife think you play games too much on your mobile device? Uh, probably not. She probably thinks I'm, I'm doing more work than games, which typically is the case where I'm oh, texting. Or... Typically, that's the case. <laughs> okay. You mean typically she thinks you're doing more work? No, typically I am, but yeah. Oh. Either way, she thinks I'm on the phone too much. That's for sure. Got it. <laughs> Steve Drake with Feed Henry, thanks for sharing with us today. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it.